Look at all this food. So I went to the store, I bought a lot of food and here are all the receipts, I'll show you later in the video. But I made a massive restock so I could go sell all of this in school and make a lot of money. And in this video, we're gonna unbox every single item here and see what's inside. Let's start the video. First item, chips. Take a look at that. All right, so this box of chips, you get them at Costco. Pretty simple and according to the price. Actually, if you look at the price, the price has been increasing. But I remember there were $12.34 when you first buy them and now they're 13 something. I'll find the exact number here on the screen. But yeah, they're increasing in price. So I might have to find an alternative pretty soon. Very disappointed, Costco. Very disappointed. All right, unboxing. Costco hot and spicy variety chips. Let's take a look what's inside. Take a look at that. Of course, one of the classics to sell at school. As advertised, I have all the basics. They have the basics that you need. Perfect, exactly what I needed. When I usually buy these at Costco, I sell them for $1 each. Pretty fair price for this size. They're two ounce or one and a half ounce bags. Usually sell for $1. So this is the Costco variety pack. Comes with 30, variety of each. It sells very well. I sell around one of these boxes every single day. Look at that, outside Sam's Club. What is up, it's Papi Chilo TV and I'm back again with another epic candy selling video. And if you haven't noticed already, I just got brand new ice fitted out on my teeth and I'm here outside Sam's Club. Actually, for the first time here, I'm gonna be restocking on a bunch of candy and a bunch of chips. I'm gonna be comparing them, see if it's worth it transferring my membership fee over here instead of Costco. Costco is closer to my house, closer to my school. So I've always been restocking over there, but I decided to travel a little bit further and come here to Sam's Club and see if they have better prices, better chips. See if it lives up to the hype because I've been talking to a lot of other candy sellers and they say Sam's Club, they prefer it over Costco. First step is to apply and get the membership to be able to restock. Let's go. You got what I need. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, I think it's over here. Let's go where all the other food is. Let's go check it out. See if it's true. So based on my initial impression, I could see that the 30 pack of chips is already $3 cheaper and it contains a lot more chips than the one at Costco. So I already see here that this chip variety pack has a good selection. Take a look. You know, so far I'm starting to like Sam's Club, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Costco actually recently upped their prices on the chips. And here, it's cheaper. I'm starting to like this variety pack, I'm not gonna lie. And I see some good chips. Some of them are the same, some are different, such as the Chester fries. 
and the munchies but I, I'm sure those are very good tasting chips so they'll sell just fine let's go ahead and look at the candy that's something I'm excited about let's go take a look at these snacks I just found them I got distracted but this is the main thing I wanted to show you take a look at this Sadly, someone already opened that box, but take a look at this. I'm not playing around. I'm not kidding. So these look like a smaller pack, one ounce. So as you can see there, it's around the quarter, every single bag here. So if I were to sell these, I would sell them for 50 cents because there's more on the smaller side, if you can see that compared to the ones here. These are way bigger, and they're probably, if you wanna make any profit, you're gonna to have to sell them for more than $1. Anything more than $1 is already high for chips. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one a pack of these and sell each for 50 cents. Epic. Sam's Club, you are on a roll today. Hey, it's Papi Chulo TV, and in this video, Due to massive popular request, I'll show you exactly how to hire your classmates to work for you. I'll show you the numbers and the math and the general rules to follow. I know, I know, many of you might hate math. I do too, but when it's math about money, now you have my attention. This is your first step into building your business empire, or as I call it, your candy cartel. And if you want to build an empire, you have to watch this entire video until the end or else you'll build a bad team that will bleed money out of your pockets. Make sure you listen closely. And if this is your first time watching my channel, I would like to invite you to join the Candy Cartel by subscribing and turning on notifications. Your bank account will thank you later. So now let's just get right into it. Finding your employees starts out with the hiring process. Let me teach you what I look out when I'm interviewing and analyzing new potential workers. Since this is not an official job in terms of contracts and law, you have to be very careful or else you could be scammed and robbed. So pay attention closely. The entire foundation upon which your business is built would be trust, and you can never be too careful. So I would highly recommend you only considering hiring close friends that you have known for a while. I would rather work harder on my own than to depend on unreliable people. You work hard already. You don't need the extra stress of dealing with unreliable employees. These people will be the closest to you, so you would have no problem with asking for your money when it's owed. And if you have a bad feeling with trusting someone with your money, I would just say sell on your own and don't go through the trouble. I made a lot of money selling candy on my own, so it's all up to you and your gut feeling if you could trust someone when hiring them. But here's a way you can minimize the loss if you are unsure. When an employee starts working for you, start them off small. Only give them $5 worth of product, no more. Tell them it's the test to see if they're able to sell candy effectively. Once they sell out, they can get more from you when they give you the money. That's when you start slowly increasing the amount of product they hold once they prove that they're trustworthy. I knew my friend pretty well, so I started him off with a good amount. He obviously was trustworthy but he was the only long-term employee I've had. I have some real footage of us selling at the end of this video so you could analyze deeply how it works. Now, let's get into the math. This section is super important. If you mess up the math, you could potentially lose lots of money without knowing it. So listen closely, let's get right into the numbers. I'll be using a 30 pack of Flaming Hot Chips from Costco as the prime example. So a 30 pack, at Costco cost me $12.34. I usually sell each bag for $1, so I end up with $30. So 30 minus 12.34, and I end up with $17.66 of profit. Divided by 30, and you end up with about 59 cents profit per sale. So I tell my workers, I'll pay you 30% commission. So each $1 sale, the chips cost me 41 cents, he gets 30 cents, and you keep 29 cents. Basically, you keep half the profit and they do all the work. So at the end of the day, you gave them 10 bags of chips in the beginning and they come back with $5 and five unsold chips. You take the chips and you take the $5 and multiply it by 0.3, which is 30%. 
and that's what you owe them. And in this case, it's only $1.50. It's not a lot, but once they start selling in larger quantities, those numbers will definitely rise. But it's passive income for you, because they are doing all the work. You have to calculate the numbers for all your products and negotiate a fair commission rate with your... You know, it really makes me sad when a candy seller tells me they got caught by their school and now they're not able to sell anymore. And if you've never been caught, I still recommend you watch this video as I'll give you my top 5 places to sell where you are least likely to get caught. In addition, I'll give you my best advice of what to do if you ever get caught and you're not able to sell anymore. And I'll give you examples of what I did when I got caught. First off, I've been caught a total of 6 times throughout my career and I've been suspended for 5 days all due to candy selling before. I know it could be very scary when getting in trouble at school because your parents will, might get mad at you or you are afraid it could affect your future such as if you're going to college. But in my experience, I was able to apply to colleges without my discipline record causing any trouble. And my parents were worried about me getting in trouble, but I told them it's not a big deal because in reality it isn't. Thanks to Poppy Chulo TV because he sent me this candy because I liked and subscribed. I believe every candy seller has at least two chances to get caught before they may have to retire for good. The first time you get caught, it will most likely be a warning. If you experience this, I would recommend looking at your strategy and changing it. Find out what made you get caught in the first place. You have to be aware of your surroundings and you have to not make the same mistake. The second time you get caught is when they quote unquote punish you. The strategy is I would highly recommend playing the victim and tell the administrators that you are just trying to make money, you're exploring entrepreneurship, and you did not mean to cause any trouble. You need to play to their emotions as much as possible. Make them feel as much sympathy for you to lower the punishment. They know that when you sell candy, it isn't really a bad thing. They just have to follow policy. Get them on your side by staying out of trouble in other areas and keeping good grades to show them that selling does not impact your school performance. Every time I've been caught, I have come back to selling. Every time I become more secretive as I memorize the positions of teachers and security during lunch and where they usually stand so I don't sell near them. I was lucky enough to find a blind spot under a tree in one of my school's quads. That's where I record most of my footage. I honestly risk getting caught more than I have to just so I can record high quality footage. I always got what you need. However, when I sell candy during lunch, I try not to walk around as much as I stay in one area where the teachers are least likely to be. When I'm not recording, I usually sell near the restrooms. And if my customers are male, I sell inside the men's bathroom. In the lunchroom where all the tables are located, the thing that draws attention is a lot of people standing and walking to your table and sometimes that can draw a large crowd and that attention is what gets you caught. So I usually walk around to tables instead of having people approach me to maintain a low profile. So my best advice for your comeback would be to start off slow. Bring 10% of what you would normally bring and only sell to your best customers, the ones that buy daily. Keep it in your main backpack or in a duffel bag covered with clothes for athletes. I would look for secret places to sell and find a rotation of locations where you could sell without drawing a crowd. Slowly up your supply and only sell to your most valued customers to avoid snitches. The thing about snitches is that it's a very hard obstacle to fully overcome. The best method I would recommend is to prevent them altogether by staying low key. If you know someone that hates you and has a potential to snitch, don't sell to them or anyone that might tell them. There's a lot of losers out there that have the focus on bringing others down and I feel bad for them for not knowing any better. I would not recommend any violent confrontation or causing a scene as that could get you into real trouble. If you want, you could talk to them. Note in a non-threatening manner and try to work out the beef. Be the bigger person. I will rank the best places in which you could sell that you are least likely to get caught. I recommend checking these places out in your school and find them and start selling in them. Find the full list below in the description for your convenience. 
self-explanatory. Teachers rarely go into the student bathrooms unless there's a lot of noise or people messing around. Try to keep quiet and monitor the crowd to make sure it does not attract suspicions from any school admins. When I'm not recording, I usually sell inside the bathrooms or right at sight. This is when I usually record myself under the tree, the periods between classes. The few minutes you have to walk to your next class is the perfect opportunity to sell. High volumes of people moving makes it hard to attract any sort of suspicion. Find a good area to set up a pop-up shop, where there's a lot of traffic, but rarely any teachers. Take advantage of these periods as much as possible. These are my personal favorite times to sell candy. If you get to school early enough, there's not a lot of people around. Same goes with teachers in some cases. Use these slow traffic times to easily approach small groups and sell to them when most teachers are not on the lookout or are barely getting to school. I also sell after school if I have remaining supply for the day. I sell in high traffic areas such as the place the buses park. Same theory applies as the previous point. I also have dedicated customers on my own bus when I take the bus home. It helps me squeeze out a few extra sales at the end of the day. In my school, the lunch area includes two main sections. The indoor cafeteria, where the majority of people go, or an outside courtyard next to the cafeteria. I usually sell outside in areas with blind spots. The people indoors that want to buy from me, they know they have to go outside to look for me during lunch if they need anything. Before every transaction, I look around and make sure nobody is looking. Then I execute the sale. If you only have an indoor cafeteria for your lunch period, I would recommend table hopping and move to each table and sitting down. Talk to people a while and look natural. Then secretly, under the table, execute the sale. Then after a while, slowly move to the next table and repeat. Look around before opening a bag and do not serve many customers at once. Tell them to wait and serve one at a time. At the end of this video, I'll provide footage of how I do this. Bonus, the locker rooms. If you are an athlete or in a PE class, the locker room is an amazing place to sell and even stash extra supply in my personal case. The main risk is drawing too much of a crowd as people will be thirsty and hungry after the PE session. When the crowd gets too crazy, stop selling, close your locker, and get out of there. Stay low key and crowd control to make sure you do not draw too much attention and do All right, let's let's get back into the roots of this channel. Some good old slimy making money at school. And if you like to make money, you're in luck because today I'm gonna show you three dirty sales tactics you could use to take all of your classmates' money and put it into your pocket where it belongs. <laughs> Papachillo TV and welcome back to another candy selling video and today I'm gonna show you how to take all your classmates money and you give them some sweet candy and then they'll make you rich and I've made thousands of dollars selling candy at school so I know what I'm talking about so you better subscribe um, if you're not I don't know what you're doing but let's go on with the video I've been posting vlogs of me at the beach recently uh, nobody wants to see that no one wants that I mean, nobody does. So let's get back to making the Benjamins. It's gonna be epic. 
So let's just jump right into the first strategy. All right, the first strategy is pretty simple, so pay attention. Here's what you're gonna do. As soon as you take the money from the person, you open your bag and you show them that what you have in selection, you take the money and you run. All right, in all seriousness, all jokes aside, here's the real strategy. Essentially, when someone wants to buy two or more things, and they usually only have a $5 bill to pay you in, you gotta tell them that, oh, I don't have change for that. For example, they get two bags and you just say, I don't have change for a five. So go ahead and get three more items. If you could see the trick there, you make them, you force them essentially to get three more items, which you make three more dollars than they were originally planning. Oh, go ahead and get a drink and a snack with your chips. So that way you upsell the customers and you start making a lot more money because some people do not wanna say, oh, never mind because some people do want chips. They either have the choice of taking all the items, they go ahead and reject it and not get anything at all, which is very unlikely when people are already at that stage of the sale. People want to eat chips, that's why they come and buy from you. I know some of you are skeptical. What happens if this doesn't work? Here's what you do. You play dumb and check your pockets. Oh, here's the change. I just found it. Oh, you're good to go. And you go ahead and give them the change. So it's a win-win. Hey, um. Papi, let me get two bags of Skittles. Oh, two bags of candy? Oh, I got you, $2. But I got a $20 bill. You got change for that? Ooh, I don't have change for 20. You're gonna have to go ahead and get 18 more items. 18 items? Okay. You know what? Never mind. Oh wait, I found some. Here you go. Here's your change for two. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Sometimes all the cashing out from selling candy to your classmates isn't enough. So you crave for more money and more profit. So you stock up on supplies and get ready to go out to sell somewhere no other candy seller has sold before. Get ready to learn how to expand your candy cartel empire into the streets of your city and to take over with this video. How to sell candy in public. It's Papi Chulo TV, and in this video, you're gonna be ready to expand your candy selling enterprise to limitless possibilities by stretching outside of school and all over your city. The process of selling in public is similar, although different in many ways. You will become the candy selling beast. If this is your first time watching Papi Chulo TV, make sure you subscribe with notifications to grow your wallet, and of course, you build your candy cartel empire. Your bank account will thank you later, and everyone at your school will love you forever for providing the sugary snacks. I'll give you a four step system to find events and go to sell the best candy to boost profits just like I did. And of course, the candy cartel always provides real footage evidence to help you out. And if you're worried about getting caught, I'll provide some advice as well near the end of this video. Let's just get right into it. Thank you, Papi Chulo, for sending me free candy. All I had to do was like and subscribe. Congrats to the previous free candy winner. If you want some, like this video now. But only subscribers can win. I'll see you at the top. Step one, stick to the sugary basics. Of course, you need to have the best candy to sell and you have very little margin of error when selling in public. Don't experiment by trying to sell some foreign mush putty that barely passes as food. You need to have the best candy that has the largest public appeal. I already covered the best candy to sell and if you want to watch that video, the video is on the top right corner. The candy I choose to sell today is the good old Skittles and Starburst variety pack of truth and justice. This. Never goes wrong. One of the best candy to sell for beginners. I'm gonna stick with this. Let's go restock. All right, we need to restock on candy so we could go out there and sell in the public. Let's go. <laughs> selling candy at school, but not in school, selling candy in public. I got what you need. Let's go. Step two. Find the party. In this video, I chose to sell during the 4th of July celebration. 
because America. But there's always public events going on in your city. The best strategy to find huge events like parades and other public events in your city, Facebook events. All right, so we're on the computer, ready to search for some events. Oh, oh Google, come on. All right, let's close out of any risky tabs. You literally just search events near me and a list of money-making opportunities present themselves before your very eyes. Yeah. What's up, Rachel? What's up? You came back from the dead, bro. I know, huh? We know what's up. Thank you very much. Yeah. If you do not want to sell at an event, you can simply sell in public areas like the park, library, and even just your neighborhood. Very straightforward. I recommend you research and find the best places to sell around your city. What are you selling? Oh, I'm selling some chips. You're not supposed to. Really? I thought I just was able to. Forget. Alright, let's go. Stay back, don't get caught. If you if the cameraman is seen, it ruins everything. Y'all thought I was lying, didn't you? Hey! What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Let me know what you need. What's up, it's Papi Chilo TV, and in this video, I'll show you real footage of when I went to another school's football game and I sold chips and candy. It was insane. And by watching this video until the end, you'll see how I approach new customers and the basics on selling snacks in school. If you're new here, make sure you drop a subscribe and join the candy cartel. Your bank account will thank you later. Lastly, if you want to get some free candy to start selling, just make sure you drop a like on this video, then follow me and hit me up on Instagram at poppychulo.tv. Congrats on the previous winners. So, are you next to win? Thank you, Poppy, for sending me all this candy, and all I did is to subscribe and turn on the post notifications, and so leave a like on one of his videos. Let's get right into the video. Take a look. I got everything. Yeah, 50 cents, everything. Sounds good. Oh, yeah, let me get chamoy. Support NHS. Free chamoy. Hey, let me know what you need. Sounds good? Hey, let me know. I'm here to provide. Never forget, I always got what you need. Hey, if you need me, add me on Snapchat. Call me up when you need it. Hey, add me up if you need anything. Sounds good? Hey, if you ever need chips, snacks, 50 cents, hit me up. Sounds good? Hey, what up guys? I just want to quickly tell you that uh, please support NHS and if you want chips, I got 50 cents each. Takis, everything. Yeah, hot Cheetos. Hey, free chamoy if you're interested. Take a look. I got Takis, everything. 50 cents? Yeah, everything. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Hey, no, thank you. Hey, hey, do you want to support NHS and buy some chips? 50 cents each. I appreciate that. Hey, let me know if you're interested. Hey, guys, hey, guys, wait, real fast. Do you want to support NHS fundraising and buy chips? 50 cents. Hey, let me know what you need. Hey, do you want to buy some chips? 50 cents each. You got to put them in the sweater and be like, hey. Hey. I don't want to be too creepy, you get me? I want, I, want, I want to actually sell stuff. I don't have money for right, let me know. Hey, hey, do you want to buy some chips? 50 cents. Let me know, support any chips. No drugs, all chips. Free chamoy. Free chamoy. Free chamoy, Free chamoy. let me know. Free chamoy? Hey, let me know. He pulled up. Let me know. Hey, what up guys? What up guys? Real fast. Do you want to support any chess fundraising? Buy some no, chips, no. 50 cents. 50 cents, free chamoy. Let me know if you're interested. 50 cents. I got takis, hot cheetos. What? No drugs, just chips. Let me know. Hey, hey, are you interested in some chips? 50 cents, support NHS. All right, let me know. This is me. I am a candy seller. 
I have several bags on me and a multitude of candy selling supplies to help me make a lot of money selling candy at school. In this video, we'll break down all the gadgets you need and the things you need to prepare to have a successful candy selling school year. These are my best recommendations based on my candy selling experience. These items is what I use to build my candy selling empire. If you have never sold before or if you're a pro, this guide will come in handy as you prepare for all the items you need. Let's just get right into it. For selling candy at school, you'll most definitely need a fridge or a freezer to cool down some of the snacks to optimal temperatures. If you start selling drinks, which are my most profitable snack to sell, I recommend you freeze them as they cool throughout the day as they thaw out. I have an extra freezer in my garage. Here's where I store all my Powerades to sell the next day. It is also highly recommended that you keep your chocolate in the freezer or fridge overnight as well. This cools them down and lowers the risk of freezing. A fridge is an essential tool for every candy seller. Show me how bad you want free candy by smashing that like button now. Only subscribers can win. Number two, starting money. You can start selling candy with as little as $1. Buy a candy from the dollar store and sell it for a profit for $1. $1.50 or $2, then repeat. But for the best results and the fastest results, to be able to start making money as fast as possible, you need around $10 to $20. The best first item to buy would be anything from Costco or Sam's Club, as they generate the most profit. If you do not have a membership, you can restock at other stores like Walmart and get yourself the Skittles Starburst Variety Pack, the best beginner candy. If you want access for the full course playlist, click the top right corner now. Number three, money clip. Instead of using a wallet, I highly recommend you use a money clip as to hold all your cash when selling candy at school. The reason is the speed at which you could access your money. With a wallet, you must open it, take out your money, hold the wallet while you fumble with cash, trying to give change when there's a lot of money coming at you at once. When I sold under the tree, I held out all my cash in my hand so I could give out change with speed. There was no time to fumble with wallets or a lot of cash. Then at the end of the selling session, I just folded the money and clipped it and put it into my pocket. Super easy. For me, it was highly convenient and I didn't want to bring my wallet with my debit cards and I'd be easily a target because I already was selling candy at school. So with a money clip, it was just a good way to reduce risk and keep organization high. Number four, a bag or a backpack. Now, I highly recommend a dedicated separate bag for your snacks that you plan to sell at school. If you throw it in your main backpack with notebooks, it just creates a mess that can get loud or you could risk getting your precious homework and notebooks dirty. It can make a lot of noise when you shuffle stuff in and out of the backpack. Unless you can't bring a separate bag, that's the only time you could put it in your main backpack. Here's my recommendations based on the size of your supply and demand at your school and how much supply you need to bring. Small. A small bag can be good for beginners if you're starting out small. Remember, the more you bring, the higher the risk of getting caught is or getting stolen from. A nice small bag can be used to be able to sell and remain stealthy. I also recommend a small bag if you recently got caught and you're planning your comeback. That's what I did when I got caught multiple times. The best small bags would be your lunchbox, pencil box, pencil bags, and if you want bonus stealth, the snack dealer med kit. Medium. Now your sales are starting to pick up so you need to start bringing more supplies you need to upgrade your bag to a medium sized bag the medium size is the best of both worlds when it comes to supply and stealth a medium sized bag can fit perfectly into your locker or you can carry it around without any issue the best medium sized bags would be the cinch bags a binder a small sized duffel bag ones that you could easily carry around with you as opposed to small bags that you need to shove inside your main bag. Large. Okay now, you're starting to ball and make a lot of money. You'll need to start bringing a lot of supply. Take a look at all the videos I made. Take a look at me selling candy. I always have to bring multiple large bags when I'm selling candy at school. And at this point, you're able to avoid getting caught. You could start bringing a large amount of supply. The more supply you bring, the more money you could generate. The large bags I recommend would be a full size duffel bag like mine, snack dealer elite or a bag with wheels for your drinks or a full size cooler that I used before. Bonus items. These items are not needed for success but I highly recommend them if you want to be successful as possible. Let's get through them quickly. Number one, Sam's Club membership, also a Costco membership. Buying your supplies from Costco or Sam's Club is the best way to get the most profit per sale. I said this a lot of times. I highly recommend preparing and investing some money into the membership if you or someone in your family doesn't have one. Use 
coupons if you take a look at the catalog of many major grocery stores carry you can see that they have coupons available on many of the foods that are also the best foods to sell i made a video previously of how i use coupons to squeeze out more profit because i could use all the money i can get spreadsheet or journal to record your expenses of revenues this one is for the advanced sellers you write down how much it costs you every time you restock then you record the daily sales and if you want you can list the inventory of how many and what candy sold for that day it can be good to track your sales to only the sell the most profitable candy and cut the snacks that are destroying your profits locker at school if you have a locker at school it could be a perfect place to stash your candy during times you can't sell and if you need to quickly hide your candy if you take a look at my rotation of different candy and snacks I sell, some do better than others. I want to rank the best selling candy in my experience for those of you who need more insight on which snacks perform the best in terms of sales in school. Every demographic will like different things, but in general, based off my experience, when talking to other candy sellers, these are ultimately the best snacks to sell ranked in tiers. Now remember, these tiers are not taste, but in how good they sell. The faster they sell, the higher the tier. But you'll notice the taste correlates with how good they sell. The S tier is the superior money makers, an absolute essential every seller needs to sell. It sells like magic. A, B, and C tier are excellent items to sell and I would highly recommend you sell these items. The only difference would be the amount of profit per sell you could get. The D tier are the snacks that are usually the last to leave my bag. The leftovers. Once all the good snacks are sold, I always have these snacks that usually nobody buys. But since it's all I have left, desperate people for snacks will have to buy them. And the F tier is garbage. Absolutely avoid at all costs. Unless the people are desperate, you have a hard time selling these items. I rank the packs and the individual snacks within them. The whole packs are ranked as a whole, and the individual snacks are ranked in how good they sell. Let's get started. Twinkies and Cupcakes Everyone's favorite breaded pastry with the creamy white insides ready to satisfy you. Personally, this is a massive hit at my school. Usually the cupcakes sell out first because most people like chocolate cake, but some people prefer Twinkies. Many people will buy one of each for $1 as I sell each for 50 cents. However, they may be squished and the chocolate can melt if you're not too careful. And if you have limited space, Twinkies and Cupcakes may not be a good choice. But overall, they have a good profit margin of about 50%, so I'll rank the box at B tier. Therefore, individually, the cupcakes are at A tier, and Twinkies are a B tier. The Classic Chips Variety Pack. Please note that this is not the hot and spicy variety pack. They contain a wide variety of the most popular original flavors of chips that many still enjoy. But I'll be honest with you guys, this pack does not perform well at my school. Compared to the hot and spicy chips, the original chips are bland and are missing that kick and flavor the spicy chips provide. Most people at my school would prefer hot chips over original flavors. But depending on your demographic, that may be different. I can suggest trying it if you would like. But personally, if you could get the hot variety, stick with that. Similar profit margins to the hot and spicy variety pack at around 55% per sale. And I would sell these bags for $1. I'll rate this box at tier C. But this leads me to my next product. The hot and spicy variety chips. Personally, my best selling product ever. Sales absolutely explode with this variety pack and everyone at my school goes crazy for them. Very easy to handle with low risk of heat damage or even getting them crushed because of the air in the bags. They all sort of create a pillow, a cushion for each other. The only downside to this pack is maybe the chips in general that they create a lot of noise when they shuffle around. If people are looking inside the bag to see what chips they want, it will create a lot of noise when they're shuffling through the chips. So you gotta be careful in that aspect. The stash was compromised. They popped one of the bags. I'm gonna have to move it. Sales are driven by the spicy hot flavors that you provide. However, one of the bags does not perform well, and we'll get to that later. The pack is extremely profitable, at around 60% profit per sale, by selling each bag for $1. I'll rank this pack at S tier. This pack is amazing, highly profitable, sells out super fast. I have to admit, 
this is my winning product. Now, individually, the Hot Cheetos with Lime are S tier. They're usually the first ones to sell out. Next would be Hot Cheetos and Hot Bunions. They're A tier. Still amazing products and everyone loves them. However, when we get to the Hot Fritos, they suck. I would rate them D tier. At the end of the day, my bag is just several bags of Hot Fritos left over. They just do not perform well at my school. I also have a large surplus of them and I have to force people to buy them to get rid of this inventory. <laughs> Skittles and Starburst Variety Pack, the legendary pack of candy. Thousands of kids all over the world fight for the chance to buy this sweet candy off you and give you their money. If you sell this variety pack, you are almost guaranteed riches in business by selling this. The Skittles and Starburst are universally liked by everyone. Each of these flavors are good and people like them evenly. But in my experience, the sour Skittles go out first, then the other packs. The Starburst flavors seem to sell evenly. I'll rank the entire variety pack and its individual candy flavors at S tier. Absolutely superior. And if you want a free pack of Skittles and Starburst variety pack, make sure you leave a like right now. Go ahead and hit that like button if you want a free pack of candy. But remember, I can only send it to subscribers. Let's go on to the next item. Drinks. Gatorade or Powerade. Since I sell both brands, I'll be ranking the color of the juice instead of the specific flavor name. Since they are very similar and it's easier to remember. Red. Everyone loves red. For sure, a red drink will sell out. A tier. Pink. The juice from the drink selling at school gods themselves. Absolutely amazing. S tier. Blue. Another popular flavor. Cannot go wrong with blue. I have some classmates that exclusively want blue and, if, and will be angry if I do not provide it. A tier. Light blue. The second juice from the candy selling gods themselves. My classmates begged me to get this flavor and will throw their money at me. S tier. Orange. More of a hit or miss. You like it or you don't, but you'll drink it if it's the last thing left. C tier. Purple. Niche flavor. Some like it a lot, some hate it. In general, it has proven to be a slow product and unsuccessful. D tier. Some flavors are mixes so they could take attributes from whatever original color they come from. And if you want to literally print money with highly profitable drinks, you gotta sell them. I also just looked on the cover and there's a hidden coupon. Take a look at that. One dollar off any five 32 ounce Gatorades. So yeah, for sure, make sure you always look out on some amazing deals where you could get some extra profit. Squeeze out that extra money as opposed to just buying the same thing every time. Don't be afraid to look out and explore a little. Chocolates. Another addition to my candy selling inventory. Chocolate are pretty good to sell as it allows for people who are craving chocolate specifically to buy from you. Chocolate is so good, it makes me want out. Chocolate! In all seriousness, chocolate is pretty decent to sell, however, it is for more advanced sellers, mostly because chocolate is delicate and can easily melt or break. It also requires maintenance, like the drinks. You'll need to add them to the freezer the night before for best results. The box itself, I would give it a B tier. It sells good, but to be honest, the profit margins on this specific box are thin. But chocolate individually is A tier. As you can notice, every category of candy you sell provides customers with a different taste and textures, depending on what they want to eat that day. You may be in the mood for something hot, spicy, and crunchy, so you get chips. You may want something sweet but chewy, you get chocolate. Or you want sweet hard candy, I got you Skittles and Starburst. Want breaded pastry, I got Twinkies and cupcakes. Want something chocolatey, I got cupcakes or chocolate bars. So I try to sell a high variety of items to increase choice and always have something for everyone. That's why all my classmates love me and buy from me every day, and that's why I'm securing the bag on a daily basis. So much money coming in, then I know what to do with from selling candy at school. Anyway, here's the tier list with all the items on it. Selling candy at school is the best way to make money as a kid or teen. Don't believe me? Watch this. Yo. 
Apart from the hours of selling footage I have to prove why selling candy at school is the best, in this video I'll list the top reasons why you need to start selling candy this year. Starting in 5th grade, I started selling gum. Then during middle school, I also started selling essays and tickets to my Minecraft Hunger Games tournaments on my Xbox 360. But in high school, that's when I started selling chips, candies, Twinkies, drinks, and so on. And ever since then, nothing's been the same. Over time, I became known as a candy seller at my school. And let me tell you, this is a unique reputation to have at school. As you watch my videos and I explain why you need to start selling candy at school, everything will start to make sense. This video is the first video in how to sell candy at school complete guide course. And you could watch the entire playlist for the entire course in the top right corner. Let's just get right into it. Look at this closely. This is one of my best selling days ever. As you can see here, I am positioned under a tree. I have my duffel bag of candy ready to go. Then as soon as the clip starts to play, you can see all the money that starts to pour in from selling candy at school. From following my videos, you could eventually reach this level as well and even better now in this video i'll explain why you should start selling candy and in a later episode i'll start showing you how step by step to reach this epic level of candy selling i always got what you need why don't you have a real job a lot of people tell me this time is money you already spent enough time in school why don't you secure the bag while you're at it it's literally the easiest and most straightforward way to make money you start profiting from day one you don't have to invest a large amount of money or risk starting an online business and honestly this does not take much work i'd prefer it over a normal job anyway Sure, you could spend your free time after school getting a minimum wage job somewhere else. In fact, some may say doing so is the correct way to make money as a teen. But getting a job should be your last option you should have. Getting such a job will eventually train you to be a good employee. But if you sell candy at school, you practice starting a business and everything that comes with it. Therefore, training you to be your own boss. Once I got going and employed the strategies to not get caught that I'll teach you in this series, I was making more money than the poor schmucks that had jobs after school because I made money during school. And I'm not saying this to brag, I'm saying this because it's possible for you to do it too. That's why I make videos. Apart from that, selling candy at school is the biggest part of my school life. But you should sell candy not only to get your education during school, but also to make a lot of money during it and all the other bonuses. Then you could relax and cash out after school with your newfound wealth. Thank you, Poppy, for giving me the, the candy, for liking and subscri subscribing. Candy selling fame. If you do it correctly by following my methods, you are able to change the entire perception of yourself for the better at your school. Selling candy at school is for number one, the best way to talk to new people and to meet people at your school and get your name out there. The definition of popular is to be widely liked by a group. Two key words, widely and liked. Let's break it down so you can see how selling candy at school will make you popular. First key word is widely. This means by many people, a large or majority part of a group. By selling candy at school, as you expand and search for more customers, you are forced to interact with new people and broaden your horizons. You must introduce yourself and represent your brand so more people are aware that you sell and your candy selling brand. There are many tactics to make people remember your brand, but that will be covered in detail and later in the course. The second key word is liked. Candy has sugar. Sugar tastes good. What tastes good makes you happy. You like what makes you happy. As you expand your business more and more, people will begin to associate the sweet taste of candy to you, which will result in a subconscious positive association, which will increase your likability. Using this trick is highly powerful to hook the masses at your school to literally be thinking about you when they get the slightest craving for snacks. Since sugar can be very addicting, people will literally be addicted to you, hitting you up and wanting you to give them more sweet snacks. I base this all off my personal experience. And let me tell you, this stuff works magically. And if you leverage this correctly, you can completely flip your school social life to one that you have never experienced before. The one you've always wanted. 
increased business skills. Starting to sell candy at school will teach you real life lessons about business and money and running an operation like a complete boss that you are. Starting with basic but crucial things like sales, marketing, money management, and social skills sharpen you as you gain more experience selling candy at school. Then, once you start employing your classmates, you get more into advanced topics like employee management, inventory logistics, and running a candy empire like a CEO. Sure, you can learn these things in a basic business class, but the experience and application of these skills are invaluable and will bring you to astronomical levels of success later in life in comparison to a textbook and a class would. I was able to apply my skills to launch several other businesses on the side using the skills I learned from my current career of selling candy at school. When I started taking business classes in high school, I already knew the concepts. The class just added formal names to them. Just another reason to start selling candy at school immediately. Personal growth. Finally, one of the best benefits I gained from selling candy at school was seeing my personal growth. I believe this is one of the most important reasons to start selling candy at school. By approaching new people, I got over the fear of approaching and talking to new people. Over time, you learn not to be phased by rejection. You learn a lot of lessons here. You can find friends that you have never met otherwise and they could become your employees. You can even use your candy selling as an excuse to approach your crush. And once she sees you as the boss you are, you will become irresistible. I did this and it worked magically. But that's a story. Puppy Channel TV in the AM. <laughs> Need. What are you selling? Oh, I'm selling some. My friend, Papi Chulo TV. <laughs> What is up, it's Papri Chilo TV, and I'm back again with another epic candy selling video. And I want to dedicate this video where we revisit the top 10 best candy selling moments so far to celebrate hitting 20,000 candy cartel members. This is insane. And I wanted to give a huge thank you to you guys. I enjoy making epic candy selling content, and I am grateful that people take the time to enjoy my work. Thank you very much. Although, I may give you the information to start selling candy. It is you that's taking action. It's you that's buying the snacks to restock, strategizing, planning, taking action, and making it happen. You are the ones building your own candy cartel empires at your school. Each of you with their different flair and style. I'm hearing a lot of success stories, and I only want you guys to keep me updated on how the sales are going. But that being said, let's just get into the top 10 candy selling moments caught on camera. Number 10. Honestly, the 10th best moment so far is when I first started selling anything. Here is the gumball machine I brought to school in 5th grade. I would sell small gumballs that would fit in this machine for a dime. I learned some of the most important principles of candy selling at this time. Because I remember a huge crowd forming around me. But before everyone knew I sold candy, I passed around a note during class saying, I got gum for 10 cents pass this on. But the funny part was my handwriting was a little bit out of control and it read like I got some for 10 cents. Pass it on. Causing mass confusion. Including when the teacher found out and read the note. My first marketing success and my first major business failure. But thankfully, I've learned a lot since then. It's only been a few minutes. Look all the money I've made. This is the pop-up shop method. Pop-up shop method. Papichula TV. Number 9. Inventing the snack pop-up shop method. This method was the one single factor that exploded my sales to astronomical levels. Ever since I started setting up a pop-up shop in one location and having people come to me, my sales just started growing and growing. When there's time between classes, I always set up a pop-up shop in one single location, whether it's near the lunchroom or under my- I always set up in a place where there's high amounts of traffic and they could see me that I'm selling and they could just easily stop by and purchase from me. The pop-up shop method is the one thing that exploded my sales to the next level. Number 8. The biggest candy giveaway my school has ever seen. Before we see that epic footage, I want to congratulate this video's free candy winner. Everybody go right now. 
click the subscribe button and click that bell for post notifications for you to get some free candy just like I did. Thanks, Poppy Chulo. If you want some candy, make sure to smash that like button. Only subscribe members can win. I remember my school was having some outdoor assembly or celebration to celebrate winter break. So it was the last day before we had a few weeks off. And everyone was out there in the courtyard. There was music playing, everyone was dancing. You know, it was a regular school function. However, I had the brilliant idea and some leftover chocolate to give it away for free. Then I'm gonna throw up candy into the air to be ready to catch. It. Over time, I started throwing, the crowd got bigger and bigger. I would recommend this because it was a very powerful marketing strategy. However, I got stopped by the teachers due to safety concerns. But make sure you do it at a way smaller scale, not what I did because that could pose a safety risk. <laughs> Number seven, hiring my first employees. First of all, starting with the girls in the office. They assisted me in my journey to get legally able to sell candy at school. They gave me the connections within the office. They had the connections for me and start the process of legally being able to sell and not being able to get caught and immune to trouble. Then, it was when I started hiring my other sellers, including another seller that stood right next to me during the pop-up shop method. Too many people started to come up to me, so I needed another seller to stand by and serve half of the incoming traffic. Using this method, our sales almost doubled. It was crazy. So I would highly recommend hiring someone as soon as possible. What are you selling? Oh, I'm selling some chips. And that's the post. Really? I thought I just was able to. Number six, getting caught on camera. It was legendary and epic to see how when I sold at another school's football game, the security guard came up to me and caught me on camera. Every time I've gotten caught, it's been off camera, and I wish I could always go back and record it. Whether it was a principal, the assistant principal, or a random security guard, or a teacher. I wish I was able to record all the times I got caught to break it down for you guys and let you know that it's not that bad. So I wouldn't fear getting caught. What are you selling? Oh, well, I'm selling some chips. You're not supposed to. I thought I just was able to. At games, just like at your school, everything that is sold is for the school. All right. No personal profit. All right. Leave and leave my chips. Yeah. All right, sounds All right. good. Uh, you can follow. The last giveaway. Never forget. I always, always got what you need. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, the insane locker room giveaway, where I gave away money and some leftover chips and the dumbest thief ever story. If you remember from yesterday's video, I talked about the dumbest thief ever. If you want to see it, click this link right now. One of my favorite moments is when I give away free stuff, which is why I give away free candy to my subscribers and I always give away the leftover candy to my classmates. What makes the locker room giveaway so funny is the way that they have to fight over each other in a very tight space to be able to get the candy or get the money. So it's always funny and it results with funny clips as you're gonna see right now. And then the one time we did give away chips, we got in trouble because one of the bags got popped and they had to pick it up and I was able to escape really. And thankfully they did not snitch. My PE class was amazing. I'll never forget the sales I made in there and the people that were in there. Shout out to them. Now let's take a look at the footage. The mighty slap that protected me against the thief. As I was teaching you how to approach without getting caught, a guy came up to my bag, it was open, and he tried to take a bag of chips. Thankfully, I was quick on my feet, and my arms were ready to strike, and I was able to get him in a hole. I confirmed he did not steal anything, and I let him go of the hold. He was trying to get my tripod, which I got it back from him. Then, once I released him, one of my goons came up and slapped him and showed him not to mess with the candy cartel. It resulted in an epic slap. 
which was heard across the whole school, and ever since then, no one ever tried to steal from us again. Number 3 selling at the furthest away school basketball game. This basketball game was crazy because not only was it my first basketball game I sold at, it was also hours away from my original location. So I absolutely knew nobody. I was at a complete disadvantage. I always do it to show you that it's very easy to get started selling candy, even me. I go to a school that nobody knows me and I'm able to sell, especially during hard times like basketball games and I'm still able to sell and make money. I'm showing you that it's that it's absolutely possible. If you do it during easy times, like this normal school day, see some success selling candy at school. Hey, do you guys wanna buy some chips? All right. Number two, what makes this basketball game different is that it's the rival high schools right next to mine. So when I sold at this high school, I knew half of the people and then some of the other people knew probably who I was, but I did not know anybody. I only knew half of the people. So I was able to sell good on my side of the school. However, when I tried to sell at the other side, that's when I met some trouble. I had to approach, use some new sales tactics. I was able to get to know a few people and start getting a lot of sales. Never forget it. If you really want to explode your sales, you got to expand your comfort zone and your horizons and go sell at other schools. Now, the number one moment of my candy selling career so far was when I sold at another school's football game for the first time. I captured the most epic footage ever seen and you're able to watch this video broken down frame by frame on the top right corner here. This video was insane, which is why I I always try to provide the highest quality footage to help you build your candy selling empire to something you've never expected or have never seen before. Those were my top 10 favorite moments of my candy selling career so far. I can't wait to see what happens in the next coming year to make the next top 10 list. So once again, thank you so much for reaching 20,000 Candy Cartel members. Thousands of people around the world are taking action and making a lot of money building their very own Candy Cartel empire at their school and we're changing the world one bag of chips one bar of chocolate one piece of candy at a time i would also highly recommend you go follow my instagram poppychulo.tv also go follow my tiktok at poppychulo tv i'm posting some epic tiktok footage there but besides that make sure to click this to watch this video next or this playlist to get an epic overview thank you so much for watching and never forget i always got what you need and i'll see you at the top